Good morning, everyone, uh, both here and at home. Um, we are continuing to return to a state of normal, such as it is. Uh, we're moving forward into new frontiers with our hybrid worship and the like, but we also want to return to some of the traditions we had before. So this morning, we're having coffee hour again, and there'll be more about that later. But also, uh, in pre-COVID times, uh, the moderator traditionally did the greeting and the announcements in the morning. So I asked Pastor Ellen if we could resume that, and she graciously agreed. So here I am to say welcome to Cleveland Park Congregation, Congregational United UCC. We are an open and confirming, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we are an open and affirming congregation, which means whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. We love having visitors and invite you to tell us who you are and where you're from. And if you're on Zoom, you can click the visitor link in the chat room. And if you're in person, you can sign in in the uh, entryway. And as always, if you're on Zoom, make sure your devices are muted. And if you don't have your video on and we can't see how many people are in attendance, please indicate in the chat room so we know how many children and adults are present. And let's see. And if you're in the sanctuary, please note that your cell phones will not be uh, workable with the because we're using our Wi-Fi full bandwidth to do the hybrid uh, service. So if you intended to do video games rather than listen to me, you're out of luck. Uh, we have a host of announcements this morning. Uh, I'll touch on them briefly. They're all in your bulletin. Um, as usual, we need greeters, readers, people to help with worship, and uh, to donate flowers. And all those things can be done online. There's a link in the uh, bulletin. Uh, coffee hour resumes today. Trish tells me that uh, she asked you to be a little patient because for some reason, the inner workings of the coffee maker have disappeared. <laughs> so they're doing some creative coffee making. They are using fresh coffee, not the two-year-old coffee that was here when we shut down. So she wanted to make sure you do that as well. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to have uh, a, the Board of Trustees will host a celebration of gratitude after work for all we've given and accomplished over the past four years. And this will include a tour of the renovations and a discussion of future plans for the capital campaign. Uh, Holy Week is coming up with a host of uh, services. We'll have our Monday Thursday service on the 14th, and that will be at 7 p.m. for Communion and Tenebrae. And it's, a, it's always a lovely service, and it celebrates the Last Supper and the New Commandment and commemorates the death at Calvary. So if you're interested in reading one of the parts in the script, uh, let Pastor Ellen know. There will be a Good Friday meditation service uh, between one and three. So you can come in at any time during that period for a uh, celebration of silent meditation and gospel reflection. So on the half hour, Pastor Ellen, there will be a gong and a reading from the gospels and the rest is quiet reflection. Always a nice service as well. Of course, Easter Sunday is on the 17th and that'll be at 7.30. Uh, the music will be glorious, I'm told, and the children and youth will participate in a celebratory Sunday School Easter Egg Hunt. So that'll be fun as well. Um, on the 23rd, we're doing an arts fest, primarily for the children, but adults also. So uh, that will be, uh, let's see, the time to gather and celebrate. Do I have a time on that? Yes, from 10 to 1. And Carol Porter and Donald Clark and uh, Wesley uh, will all be our resident artists will all be here to uh, take part and uh, help the children with art and everything's going to be creation that day so that'll be fun on april 30th finally uh friendship place is doing their annual friendship walks i'm pleased to say that our uh children and youth group and grandin are going to be joining us this year um, that will be at 10 30 on the mall at their gathering at 17th and constitution uh, so anyone else who would like to join the group, there's a sign-up link also uh, in your bulletin, and or you can contact me. So with that, I will turn it over to Pastor Allen.
Thank you so much, Bruce. Um, just a, a quick addition, um, one, to make sure that you know that, there we go. I always have to turn off my computer sound. Um, one, just to make sure you know that the Arts Fest on April 23rd is actually for all ages. We will have art supplies and projects available. We're going to be having tables set out on the side lawn. You are welcome to bring friends and family. Um, Carol Porter's vision with Don and Wesley's support and um, professional assistance is that this just be a celebration of spring and our being able to come back together again in person. Um, and then the only other thing that I wanted to say is that just a reminder that we are still collecting for Celestin's overseas shipment. I have set a deadline because I've realized that deadlines are important. <laughs> we already have a bunch of things in the parlor, but anybody who would like to contribute kitchenware, clothing, books, electronic devices, an electric gas power generator, please bring them by next Sunday, April 10th. And if you need to arrange a midweek drop off, just email me. I'm happy to figure that out for you. Um, Celestin's mother is a leader in her Christian community and we'll see that each item gets the right home. So we begin this fifth Sunday of Lent, almost through this journey. We begin this fifth Sunday of Lent by lighting our candles of hope and healing for the world. Our Lenten theme is trust. And this morning we'll hear reflections from five different congregation members on what this means to them. Please join me for the call to worship. Restore us, O God, like water in the Negev. Go and do great things for us. Let us rejoice. May those who leave weeping return with shouts of joy. Those who sow tears reap much happiness and peace. And now together for the opening prayer. God of all that is, whom can we trust? What does trust mean? Bad things happen to good people all the time. Where are you? We want you to take away our pain, but maybe you don't. Even Jesus wondered if he was forsaken. Perhaps you are simply present with us, no matter what. And wherever and however we are, whenever we turn to you, we are home. Amen. Please rise as you are able for our opening hymn, Just a Closer Walk with Thee, page 557 in your hymnal.
Turn the mic on. We can't hear you. Well, thank you, Nicholas. I just did a hybrid no-no. Well, goodness, I'm just going to very quickly say again that we are very happy to have Greg Parker here as our accompanist. Happy as always to have Latia as our cantor. And um, I think there was something else that, yes, I was actually speaking to those of you online that I have just put the links to the announcements in the chat room. And thank you as always for your patience as we figure out this new mode of worship. I now invite you again to join in a time of silent reflection. When we gather for worship, we heed God's call and honor our need for Sabbath and rest. When we enter into silence, we attune our hearts and open our minds to a presence greater than our own. As we begin this short period of meditation, I encourage you to bring your full self to this present moment. Set aside any distractions, lay down your burdens, and take a deep, life-giving breath. God is with us. Let us reflect upon the week that has passed. What are the joys we have celebrated? And what concerns have we endured? Are there things we have done that we ought not to have done? And are there things we have left undone that we ought to have done? As we look forward to the week ahead, what help will we need from God or neighbor? And what can we do to nurture love of God and love of neighbor in the world? We'll close in prayer. Source of life, for the joys we have celebrated, we give you thanks. God of compassion, 
For the concerns we have endured, please tend our hearts. Spirit of justice, for those things we have misdone, transform us with your love. Companion God, as we look forward to the week ahead, be ever present with us. And great lover of all, as we seek to nurture love of God and neighbor in the world, guide our actions and our prayers. Amen. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, come to me. All you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And as you know, the way I hear these words is that we are each carrying burdens. Some of them light, some of them very, very heavy. And the way I hear these words is that Jesus is saying, you can set those down. They'll still be there. You may have to pick them up again but come to me and just rest a while. I'll walk it with you. And I think that's what forgiveness looks like. No matter what you have done or left undone, just come, set it down, and then we'll work on making it right. And I believe that that is a most beautiful assurance of forgiveness by a God whose awesome and redemptive power is love. Now held in the arms of this God who is both father and mother, we pray together the prayer of Jesus, our brother, and as we do on each Communion Sunday, we share a different version of the Lord's Prayer. Please join me. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God, in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen.
Now I invite everyone online to unmute and those of you in the pews to stand up and share the peace and love of God with one another. Peace be with you all. Peace be with all of you. Here. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello, Jerry. Hi, Nancy. Hi. Hi, Amy. Hello. Always see Emma's Everybody. We love seeing all the people in the church. What I am saying is the best of wishes. Here's John and Sarah. Hello, hello. There's Lisa. Hello, hello, Lisa. So good to see everybody. Okay. <laughs> Based on a request that I had this week that I thought, yes, of course we need to include that. So listen carefully. I invite you to place your hands over your heart and repeat after me. May peace and health be with me. May peace and health be with my friends and family. May peace and health be with this congregation. May peace and health be with our city and our country. May peace and health be with this entire world. Amen. All right, I'm now going to invite any children or young at heart people um, in the sanctuary to come up to the chancel. And I'm just looking to see, I know we have Joseph and I see Zachary online. And I think Magda is there already, but I don't think she's been feeling well. So I don't know if she'll join us. Um, and while I'm waiting for those of you to um, come up front, Nicholas might also want to join. Nick, I know you'd like to kind of join this. Um, while I'm waiting for you all to come up front, I'm also going to thank, as always, our fabulous tech volunteers or tech deacons as or geek deeks, geek deeks, <laughs> um, who are up in the balcony. Um, this morning, it's Don Marshall and John Tishy and Teddy Corrales. And believe me, we could not do this without those folks. So. Great gratitude. And of course, also gratitude to all the worship support people who set up communion and coffee hour, which we're doing for the first time in two years. So it takes a village. It really does. So I am so happy to see all of you. Would you each like to share your names um, and you can share the baby's name? Alice and Bowen, Aliyah, and your member the Frost family, is that right? Yes. Molly and Edmund are your grandparents. Oh, right. And Aaliyah is a friend. That's right. And then names, Daphne. And can I say your name, Ren? And Ren? Yes. All right. It's so wonderful to have all of you with me. So, you know, we do this peace prayer every single Sunday, either online or in person. We do the peace prayer. And I was just wondering this morning, I have a question for you. I'm wondering what peace means to you. Because mm. health is sort of obvious, right? Like peace and health, you know, health. Okay, so you're not sick, you know, you're healthy. Maybe you're eating good, nutritious things. But peace, what does that mean to you? And I'm talking to both 
you and I'm also talking to those of you who are online Zachary and Joseph or Joseph's parents Oh Magda you're with us too yay and Nick like nothing bad happens to you like there's no like violence or anything When nothing bad is is happening to you and everything feels all right is that what you said Zachary mm -hmm. Yeah Thank you. Thank you. Because there are no right answers here. This is just what peace means to you. Thank you, Zachary. Magda or Nick, do you have anything that you would like to add to that? Not right now? Okay. So how about Daphne? I'm, you don't have to answer, but do you have, do you have something you would like to share? Oh, Magda does want to. Um, like, um, something calming or relaxing happening. A calming or relaxing thing happening. Yeah, Abs yeah, absolutely. How about, how about those of you up here? What does peace mean to you? You don't have to share. It's perfectly fine to pass. But if you have something, happiness and yeah joy yeah peace and joy absolutely are can be related there's a wonderful quote by a woman named Anne Lamott that says let's see joy is peace at rest and pe let's see peace is joy at rest and joy is peace with wings I love that quote peace is joy at rest and joy is peace with wings. How about any of you out here? Any anything you want to add about what peace means to you? Yeah, Caroline. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, because one of the important things about that peace prayer is we're not doing it by ourselves, right? We're doing that peace prayer in community with one another. And when we do that peace prayer, we're thinking about other people. We're not just asking for peace and health for ourselves, although we're important too. We're also asking for peace and health for our family and friends, our congregation, our wider community, our country, the world. Yeah. So I think that peace is a lot of different things as we just heard, but I think that that community part, thank you so much, Caroline, that community part is a really big part of it, is that when we come together and we feel like we're part of a larger group, and when we feel like we're part of something even greater, the spirit of God, that can really make us feel like we have, as I was saying earlier, a place to rest. And that is peace. Yes, Edmund and Kurt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Edmund is saying peace is not passive, meaning you don't just kind of sit back and, and just wait for peace to come to you. It, there's also a part of it that it's like you work to cultivate peace. Kurt? Ah, flows like water. Peace flows like water. Yeah, just that sense of, whoo. All right, well, thank you all so much for sharing your thoughts on peace. I really appreciate it. Bowen, we are so glad to have you up here in front. You can say hi to baby Joseph right up there on the screen. Hi, baby Joseph. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Blessings and peace. And if you want to sit there, you can continue. Or if you would like to go back to your seats, you can do that. I believe that now Callie is going to share a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Welcome. 
Good morning. Our reading today is Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 8. Thus says God, doomed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength and whose hearts turn away from God. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in God, whose trust is God. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. Thank you so much, Callie. So as I said earlier, this morning, five members of our congregation have generously agreed to share their thoughts on trust. Three of them, one anonymous, asked me to read their words. Two will speak in person. I am so moved by each one of them and trust you will be as well. First, from Lee Roll. When I think about the word trust, I hear my father's voice from my childhood. We lived across the street from a playground. And when I told him that my sister wanted to go to the playground with me and I would be careful, hold her hand and cross the street looking both ways, he said, I trust you will take care. At the time, I didn't think about the word trust. What I learned was that my father believed I was going to do what I said. He had confidence in me. Fast forward to today and where does trust fit into my life? It looms large in all my connections, friendships, family, caregiving, making personal decisions. Can I place confidence in others that they will do what they promise? rely on someone to provide the needed care, have confidence in others? Can I rely on my decisions to be the correct ones? Ultimately, can I trust myself? Yes, I believe with my life experiences, hope and God's spirit within and around me, I can. John? mic is on. So when I started thinking about the topic of trust, um, a couple things came into my head. Um, When I, start thinking, when I started thinking about trust and what I was gonna speak on today, the, the first thing that came into my head is my business life. Um, I invest money for other people. Uh, they trust me to make wise investments that are going to hopefully produce a good return. And about eight years ago, we ended a 10 year relationship with a, a capital provider who gave us a recommendation to our next capital, capital provider, which was the best thing he could have said for us. He said, I trust those guys to do what they, they do what they say they're going to do. Um, so that that's the easy part of trust for me. Uh, as I think about trust in my, my non-business life, in my family life, and in my recovery life, I'm a recovering alcoholic and drug addict. And uh, I've been sober coming up on 18 years on May the 1st. And um, <laughs> I did not get sober uh, because I woke up one day and 
uh, said I needed to stop drinking and drugging. I had an intervention. I had to go to rehab. And so I came into this new way of living desperate for a new way of life, desperate to try something, things that I didn't trust them. I didn't know what they were. I didn't believe them, but I just knew that I couldn't continue living life the way that I was living my life. And so that led me to rehab. That led me to meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous. That led me to find a sponsor. That led me to start doing the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, which is really a lot of self-reflection, which I had never done, certainly in the early steps, then talking to other people about those things. And, and during that process, amazing things started happening to me. Um, you know, they tell us in AA, uh, I don't care whether you believe in God or not, pray anyway. And if you got to put your shoes underneath the bed to get on your knees and pray, pray whether you believe it or not. But amazing things started happening for me. I stopped drinking. I stopped drugging. I started living up to the person that I thought that I would be. And, and what does that mean? That simply means I do what I say I'm going to do when I say I'm going to do it. In my family life, in my relationship with Caroline, in, in relationship with my kids, they did not want to hear words anymore. They needed to see action. And so now, some 17 and 11 months later, uh, I trust that the AA way of life, the spiritual basis, and I found reconnected with my God, the God of my understanding through AA, I have faith that that process is going to work for me no matter what the problem is. I've buried my parents in sobriety. I've raised kids. I've navigated the daily trails. And so I don't think about trust so much other than just taking the actions that I've been, that I've been taught to take um, and by letting go of outcomes is, is really the biggest thing for me. My, my job is to take the action and to let go of outcomes. And if I take the actions, the outcome is going to be okay, no matter what it is, because I have a set of tools. I have a faith in this, in the God that lives in this room and every room that I walk into, in the people around me and in the steps of Alcoholics Anonymous to keep me connected so I can be of use and service to other people. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. The next person whose words I'm going to share preferred to remain anonymous. Trust is our theme for Lent. That's ironic for me. Roughly eight years ago, a male acquaintance told me I had trust issues and the next morning threatened to kill me. I hadn't trusted him because I really didn't know him. Sure, I knew how he liked his coffee and other facts, and we had a mutual friend. However, I hadn't seen him over long periods of time, interacting with and reacting to a variety of people and circumstances. Before this, I always thought people wouldn't hurt me since I was nice. Little did I know that some people hurt others for no reason at all. That man and his threat interacting with dormant genes, perhaps, altered the chemicals in my brain in a way that doctors and I didn't understand for eight long, scary, traumatic years. During that time, my life was in danger sometimes due to my mental illness. God sent people into my life and saved my life by working through those people. At the end of those eight years, I had drawn closer to God, and I started my recovery by getting to know God reading the Bible cover to cover, observing God and people in nature, accepting that God is more loving than angry and wants us to heal and grow, not punish us. I vowed to rebuild, but on God's foundations of increased humility, spirituality, and compassion. Over time, I've noticed it's easier for me to trust when I have plentiful resources. But of course, money and resources don't matter to God. God provides for the birds who have nothing, and God will take care of us. Given my experiences, I should definitely trust God. But sometimes I want my own way, just like a child. I don't want God to ever tell me it's time to die, to do something scary, or to do something really hard. 
I doubt my own strength to deal with what God might throw my way. But I know all strength comes from God, with whom all things are possible. Even scarier, I want God to use me in tiny ways or large that suit God's purposes. I know God has a plan that is bigger than me in my life and my wants and my fears. I need to trust God's plan, though I don't know it. I can't understand it. And it might mean some more unpleasant things for me. God gave me this life so I shouldn't get selfish or greedy with it when it comes to God. I do trust that God, God wants good things for each of us. And what is good in God's eyes? I just know that sometimes the toughest times render us different in ways that we or society might think disable or lessen us, but which make us better people in God's eyes and enable us to have deeper, richer, more meaningful lives. Praise be to God and blessings on your journey. Again, that was from an anonymous member of the congregation. I'm very grateful to them for sharing. The next thoughts are from Elizabeth Sheeman, and she asked me to read them. At first glance, the connections I had with the word trust were free as breath precious, easy to break, difficult to re-earn once broken, and therefore beautifully fragile. Inspecting why these connections are true to me in this moment, I found that trust indicates my belief in a shared level of care or concern, love even. And more importantly, this may actually be a reflection of the care concern we've learned to expect from the world. From a life where most foundational figures, parents, friends, family, have proven trustworthy, I learned to expect trust. And I can see where a person with a life experience smattered with trust broken may not have anything left to expect but doubt or even fear. Is trust a thing to be given, received, or a facet of being in a relationship? or in relationship. Reflecting on the story of the prodigal son, Steve Garnus Holmes writes, God does not give us things. God gives us relationships. When Jesus heals people, he restores them to community. Let what you seek bring you deeper into your kinship with all people and all creation. It is only as kin that we can truly pray and that we truly receive. It may be the work of my lifetime, Elizabeth herself continues, to get back to trusting freely or first seeking it, rather than awarding trust as a token after a long fought battle against doubt. When people closest to you break your trust, shatter expectations, do you begin to question the trust you accept from people who don't know you at all, who owe you nothing? I did, do, am, questioning. In fact, after the last two years and the glimpse it has given me at what broken trust feels like, doubt, skepticism, even fear, interpersonally and globally, I often wonder how trust exists at all. That is a true miracle in a perpetually broken world. Perhaps the difference is that trust is an offering in a relationship rather than a payment. Less a transactional good and more a symbiotic stream. As a carrier of God's love in this world, I hope I can find my way back into this stream. I want to build trust with others so that if hurt from experiences of broken trust, together we might grow into that expectation of shared concern. Fragile and crystalline, complex, beautiful, strong, and easily broken, trust. Thank you so much to Elizabeth for her words now Callie will share hers. 
I'm not going to close it all the way so it doesn't turn off. Um, speak right into the mic. Height accommodations, you know. I don't specifically believe that things get better, at least not simply as a function of time passing. But I do, I absolutely do know that nothing lasts forever. And this understanding, plain and low to the ground as it is, it holds space for nothing less than salvation. For what is salvation but a way out when there is no way out? Nothing lasts forever. It's not though just holding our breath until a very long time gives way to not forever. The only thing I can think to say is that I trust in process. I trust that the holiness of time makes alchemy possible and that the sediment sinks to the bottom and that the waters become clear. I have not always trusted in process. Even now, it's more a knowing than a choosing, a knowing begrudgingly renewed with every question that disorients me from myself. Before I trust, I think, I read and I write and I question and I despair and I wonder, and eventually, at some point, after a month or six months or two years, I tap out. I am spent. I am done. I can't get any further, which is incredibly frightening because it feels so much like it will last forever, but it doesn't. I've come to recognize this moment as nothing more than the pause between the inhale and the exhale, the reading and the writing and the questioning and the despairing and the wondering, they are the ladder I needed to build before I could ever be ready to sit quietly with God in the heights of a sycamore tree our feet swaying, our eyes gently focused on the river below. At some point in our quiet sitting together, I accept that I don't know. And I stop fighting the fact that I won't come to know through sheer force of my willpower. I just take my deep breaths and try to let the exhales be long. And in fits and starts, the mud gives way to the water. Until, of course, the rain or a broken tree branch or an anxious hand on the river's edge muck up the sand and my confidence and my clarity, they scatter. Honest processes are rarely linear. I share with you that I am a woman of queerness who chooses the Christian tradition and sometimes lives with the company of depression and always lives with the company of a pattern loving mind. And I've come to name these things because I've come to know these things, because I've come to trust in process, because we live in process. Godspeed to you as you build your ladder, as you wait between the inhale and the exhale, as you sit in good company, high up in the branches of the sycamore tree.
Thank you so much, Callie and others. One of the things that I love most about our congregation is that we each speak with our own voice. And I will tell you another thing about our congregation is that we're allowed to clap in the sanctuary. And now holding all of these words in our hearts and minds, I look forward to hearing Latia and Sarah sing while Greg accompanies. Thank you so much. It is now the time in our service where we share our deep joys and concerns, silently or out loud with God and with one another. I'll share those we've already received plus any posted in the chat room. And then I'll invite those of you in the sanctuary to share. Alan um, can bring around the microphone. God, hear our healing prayers for Ed, who's receiving hospice care, and for Lee by his side. Jonna's friend, Sarah, who is being treated for stomach cancer, and her family. Wesley's uncle, Al, who is being treated for tonsil cancer. Molly's friend, Chad, who is in the hospital. Julie's friend, Kristen, who is undergoing testing. The husband of Dawn's friend, Krista, who had a bad skiing accident and will have a long recovery. Joseph Beatty, former member and continuing friend of our church as he recovers from vascular surgery. God, hear our prayers for anyone, anywhere, who is sick or grieving or in need. Just as we have concerns, God, we also give thanks for so many things, including the joy of worshiping in the sanctuary. That former member Katie Omberg will be ordained on May 1st. 
for Jane's friend who undergoes daily dialysis, holds a full-time job, heads a three-generation family, and still has an active sense of humor. Let us take a moment of silence to hold these joys and concerns, and I invite those of you online to share any in the chat room. Emily asks us to pray for her parents who have COVID. And Julia Baxter would like to add a prayer for her dear friend and family as her dad has recently chosen to stop treatment for cancer. Anyone in the sanctuary would like to share? Just raise your hand. It's on. Oh, okay, I guess the mic need, needs to be turned. I'm sorry. All right. On the side, just move the button on the side. Don't touch the bottom. I believe it's dead, friends. Oh, wait. No, somebody turned it off on the bottom. No, it's dead. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. Oh, and also prayers for little Lila, who is what, two years old? Nearly three, but that is not an easy time to have a broken wrist. So prayers for Lila and patience for her family and prayers for the family of Marjorie Ruth at the loss of her son in a car accident. Anyone else? Yes, Kurt, if you just speak loudly, I will repeat what you say. Absolutely. Prayers for the ongoing invasion in Ukraine. And Dawn says, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so we have one more concern for Sybil's dad, who's in the ER after a seizure. And then we have two joys. John and Sarah say, for the joy of Ramadan shared with our Muslim friends. And Don says, a celebration that Wesley's uncle's tonsil cancer PET scan confirmed it's restricted to the tonsils and lymph nodes in the neck and has not spread further. Wonderful. Let us pray. Loving God, listen to the prayers of your people. Comfort and nourish us in both our joys and our concerns, spoken or unspoken, and hold us tenderly as we face the many different experiences that life and being human can bring. Holy and gracious Spirit, we are grateful for your presence as we move into this new week, a time that will bring forth its own sorrows and joys. Remind us to hold one another in love and prayer, reaching out as we are able to lend a hand, 
offer support or share in celebration. We give thanks for the blessing of this congregation in our lives and pray that we might be a blessing to others in return. In your compassionate name, amen. We are now going to receive the offering in grateful appreciation for the life and work of this beloved community. To support the ongoing work of our church, I ask that you please give in person via mail or on our website as you are able. If you're here in the sanctuary, you are welcome to place a donation in the offering box at the rear of the church. We're not yet passing the plate. I put the donate link in the chat room if you'd prefer to give online now. If you have any difficulty, please email John Tishy, our assistant treasurer. His email is in the chat room as well. I now invite you to take a moment of silence or not, either is fine, in appreciation for the gift of this church and its many blessings in our lives. Please rise as you are able for the doxology. So for those of you who are at home, if you don't yet have um, something to eat and drink, you're welcome to get that. Well, I will share our words of welcome. Our communion table is open to all, and we bid you welcome. We bid you welcome all who come with weary spirit seeking rest. We bid you welcome all who come with hope in your heart. We bid you welcome all who are seekers of a new faith, who come to probe and explore, who come to learn. We bid you welcome all who enter this hall as a homecoming, who have found here room for your spirit, who find in this people a family. We bid you welcome whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey. We bid you welcome, just as you are, just as you are. If you're online with your own bread and cup, you can join me in the blessing. On the night that Jesus ate his last meal, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, whenever you eat of this, do so in remembrance of me. At that same supper, he took the cup of wine, blessed it, and shared it with the disciples, asking that whenever they drink of it, brents of him. And so remembering Jesus, we ask God to bless these gifts 
of bread and wine. May all who partake of them be filled with the Spirit, and may they be signs of life and peace for the whole world. I now invite you, if you're in the sanctuary, to rise, and if you are, you are from Carol, Carol, raise your hand, there you go. From Carol on up on this side, you're going to come and get your little cup and your piece of bread from this table. And if you are behind Carol or on this side, please go to the back station and get your little cup and piece of bread. When you've gotten it, bring it back to the pew and we will all share the cup of bre the bread of life and the cup of blessing with one another. and the cup of blessing. Please join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for bringing us together at your table connected by love wherever we may be. We're grateful to have been reminded once again how much we are loved, and we ask for your help in sharing this love with the world. May we extend the welcome we have experienced here today, everywhere we go and with everyone we meet. And may we be blessed with your creating strength redeeming grace, and sustaining peace. Amen. Please all rise as you are able for our closing hymn.
tech folks, did we have slides for that hymn? Did we have slides for that hymn? Oh, okay, for some reason they didn't show up online. Got it. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so I'm going to ask that you, sorry about that little um, sidebar. I'm going to ask that you please remain standing for the commission and sung benediction. After the postlude, I invite anyone who feels comfortable to join the fellowship committee in the parlor for our first in-person coffee hour in over two years. And for those of you who feel more comfortable remaining masked, you're welcome to come in, or if what works for you is to go back outside and enjoy this beautiful day, that is fine too. As we go forth, I share these words from the great Maya Angelou. Have enough courage to trust love one more time and always one more time. Please join in our sung benediction. <laughs> <laughs>